good gear changing for a woman. Nice compliment from a man. You ought to hand it to the men who created a gearbox so silent and responsive. Yes, it is rather wonderful, isn't it? All those gears and things whizzing round so quietly under one's feet. Well, nearly all the gears in this gearbox of yours are in constant mesh. That means they're connected to their shafts by couplings to transmit the power. You see? I'm afraid I don't see. Well, when you move the gear lever, you move these couplings, and they engage the gears smoothly by means of their synchronesh mechanism. I can vouch for the smoothness. Of course, at one time all gears slid into mesh. But now, with constant mesh, we can use gears with slanting or helical teeth to ensure that they always rotate in silent engagement. Silent engagement? That sounds romantic. It is romantic. When you realize the story of careful workmanship and accurate production that lies behind silent and certain gear operation, I hope I'm not boring you. I'm all attention. Now, let me tell you. It begins with the gear blank which is produced in a powerful forging machine that performs six separate operations. The final one being to separate the shaped blank from the bar on which it has been formed. Of course, all this happens before the teeth are cut. I thought it was only babies who cut teeth, but go on. Then, amongst other processes, the forged blank has to be pickled and cooked. Would Mrs. Beaton approve of that, do you think? <laughs> I'm sure she would. You see, the cooking or annealing, which makes the blank ready for machining, takes place in an electric oven. Like mine at home? Well, yes and no. The heat has to be very carefully controlled, and as the process must be accurately timed, an electrical temperature recorder tells the operator exactly what is happening. But that's only the beginning of the story. Then comes all the machining, in which accuracy is the first essential. The internal diameter is first broached out. Poached? After pickling and cooking? No, broached, with a long cutter passing through the gear. Then the blank is turned in multi-tool lathes. as many as 12 cutters turn down the surfaces, after which drilling provides the oil waves. Cutting the teeth entails the use of a large number of costly machines, for each gear may have as many as 76 teeth. What a mouthful. Yes, and each must be precisely formed and spaced to within well under a thousandth part of an inch. A special machine is used to remove the rough metal burrs left on the teeth edges by the gear cutters. The machining operations then conclude on the finisher, which perfects the finish of each tooth so that the gear can be submitted to a searching examination by the inspector. He checks the accuracy of the preceding operations, verifies the concentricity of every gear, and ensures that it will rotate accurately when in the gearbox. When passed as satisfactory, the gear has to be heat treated or cooked again. It must be getting quite tender by now. On the contrary, this treatment is to make it tough, so that it'll withstand wear indefinitely. Engineers say that the gear has been hardened and tempered. For hardening, it is first raised to a dull red heat in molten salt. Well seasoned, eh? The temperature is again most carefully controlled, and the process is accurately timed so that at the precise moment required, the gear is plunged into oil, which by its quenching action hardens the steel. This is followed by a tempering process, similar to the annealing we've already seen. And now at last, I suppose it's all ready to serve. Not quite. We've not finished with the machining yet. The next thing is to grind the internal bore of the gear. 
for on this depends its true rotation in service, without which noise and wear would be inevitable. And now each pair of gears that will have to work in mesh in the finished gearbox can be mated and run in together. It is here that the care and skill applied to all the machining processes are put to the test. The running in is effected with machines so constructed that the operator can apply a load while he listens to the gears as they rotate in mesh. This is followed by yet another inspection, or rather audition, for the inspector listens for any fault. When passed for service, the gear is marked to identify it, so that it can be correctly assembled with its proper mating gears. I see. So now the gears are all married and ready to settle down in harmony. Yes. Every one of the gears in your gearbox has to pass through this or a similar sequence of operations. And the gearbox itself is just as important. A home for the couples to live in, eh? Yes. And it must be a perfect home. In all the operations involved in producing the gearbox itself, the utmost precision is equally essential. faces are most accurately machined and all together with the many intricate boring and drilling operations there are 26 distinct processes. Every important dimension of the finished gearbox is then checked by a highly expert inspector using a whole host of special gauges with which he verifies no fewer than 45 dimensions before he passes the gearbox as satisfactory for use. Now I know why they say silence is golden. Yes. It's just a question of making certain at every step that every component is fit for its arduous duties. And you may be sure that an experience, second to none, is devoted to the problems involved in the production of this all-important part of your car. When it comes to assembling, all the parts combine to give a complete unit that will function with efficiency under all normal conditions. When all the gears and shafts are in place, assembling is completed by fitting the top cover with the gear lever. Then away to the final test. Now that you realise all this, perhaps the present and positive operation of the gearbox in your car doesn't seem so surprising after all. Not surprising? Well, perhaps not. Yet I confess I feel a little piqued. Piqued? Yes. I thought it was all due to my good gear changer. But the credit for silence, ease of control and pleasant travel must go to the Austin designers and engineers.